Alrighty. Sorry for being a couple of minutes late. Had a little bit of an issue, but it looks like we're running good. We uh, upgraded our modem and router. My parents were due for an upgrade and the, the modem kind of crapped out this morning. So I was running around earlier, but all ready for the live stream. How's everybody doing today? Hey everybody on Instagram. Yeah, so I just, today I just finished off the irrigation uh, for my parents' bed where I adapted it from kind of my market garden on off setup and finished the video for that. That'll come out on Friday. Uh, today's uh, growing food now video featuring, you know, some of the basic gardening skills that you need to grow your own food. Today was all about starting your own seedlings from seed. And uh, that's like one of the most important skills that you can have when it comes to growing your own food so you can uh, be self-sufficient, especially if you can save your own seed. That's like the ultimate. And that's been fun. I've been able to do that a few times where you, you, know, you save the seed and then the next year you start your own seeds from your seed. So how's the uh, stream quality? Is it kind of okay or? What's up? Hey Kayla in Tennessee. Hey Richard. Hey Christopher. Hey Kayla. Hey Dragstrip. Yeah, it's weird. The on my uh, streaming software, like the connection keeps bouncing all over the place. But uh, hopefully that'll fix itself. And if I have to, I'll stop the stream on my phone. So let me know if it gets kind of bad, and then I'll I'll try to adjust. What's up, everybody? Okay, well, we'll see how it goes. It's like jumping all over the place. I don't know if I can uh, fix it. Okay, good. I'm glad it's not too bad. So, what else did I do today? Yeah, I basically just edited videos. I fixed, finished up the garden. Uh, I'm gonna be gone for the next couple of days from our house, so we really needed to get the irrigation set up so that we can be away. And um, you know, the uh, some of the, the seedlings I planted in the beds are seven days old now and those are starting to sprout still waiting for the carrots those are always lagging way behind right so um i'm right next to the router i'm like literally five feet away from it and uh, my family's inside and you know they're playing games and making noises so it'll be a little more private out here <laughs> hey lewis in australia carlos another southern california person out there love it Donald from Tennessee, man, I can't wait to get out there, you guys. We, um, right now we're in the process of getting pre-approved for our loans. We just sent the uh, mortgage person all of our info, and so we're waiting to hear back. Hopefully tomorrow they'll let us know uh, what we got approved for. Hey, Kim. Hey, what's up on Instagram, Mike and Sylvia, Oscar, Travis, how are you guys? It is a beautiful day here in... Uh, Southern California, I have to say, it's like 70, blue skies, sunny. So yeah, let's get started. Whatever you guys want to ask, any questions, I, I love helping and sharing whatever knowledge I have. So just let me know. Oh, nice. You used to live in the Mesa? That's super close, super close to where I farm too. <laughs> oh, Callie Kim's doing it live too. Nice. Yeah, she's sucking down all the uh, bandwidth. <laughs> yeah, let's see here. I got everything turned on. Oh, yeah, there's nothing else I can do to make this faster, so I don't know. Here, I'm going to try. Um, I'll try ending the Instagram video. Let's see if that fixes it. Hmm, it's looking better. Yeah, you know what? I think that might have fixed it. Because now it's all green. Cool. Alrighty, so let's get started here. I'm tired today. Didn't sleep uh, as long as I would have liked. But, okay, let's start out with the A. Morin here. Do you use biochar? Uh, yeah, I do use biochar. Absolutely. And, oh no, why is the stream dead? 
Uh. Why is it doing that? Uh. I wonder why it's crashing. I don't understand. So uh, I, I can see the stream bounce is bouncing all over the place. That's why I'm not talking yet. So everything's off. So for biochar, yeah, I, I'm a huge fan of biochar. Are you sending soon enough data? Yeah, hold on a second, guys. Hopefully it'll fix itself. Let me. I might need to tell my family to get off Wi-Fi if they're on it. Looks like we're back. Sorry about that, guys. I thought this <laughs> the new router and modem would be crushing it right now. So on biochar, yeah, it's fantastic. And just got to think about biochar as like a, the perfect home for microbes and fungi. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> One of my neighbors has like a motorized tricycle, like low rider thing. That's insane. And for biochar, Um, for biochar, the percentage that you want to use, I read a, a couple studies about it, and I think they saw like five to ten percent, and like a, a soil mix was was pretty good. I think it was like beyond twenty percent, it did not help. Um, and if you're making it yourself, you want to make sure you make it really well. Make sure it's fully inoculated, otherwise that carbon will pull nutrients out of your soil. It's all good. All right, that's my software is telling me it's all jacked, but. Oh, it's very frustrating. I'm sorry, guys. I don't know if we're going to be able to do it today. Yeah, it keeps cutting in and out. And all my settings are the same. So I'm not really sure what's happening. And now it's back to full. It keeps going back up to like 2,000 kilobytes a second, and then it will dip down and go... Back. All right, I'll try to keep talking, you guys. I think OBS like records what I'm doing, and then it like transmits once the connection's there. So uh, I'll, let me scroll up. I'll try to answer some questions. Um, so Sweepy, yeah, the the garden irrigation. I've got a really in depth video coming out on Friday for that, and. It's probably going to be like 25 minutes or something. And I go over all the basics, you know, emitter line versus drip tape, pressure regulators, the particle filter you need, um, basic timers, um, running poly line, all that sort of stuff is going to be in Friday's video. Um, so maybe we can talk about that more on Friday. <laughs> um, Celeste says she has a, uh, she lives in an apartment and there's no balcony, but I do have a large south facing window. That's perfect. What edibles can I grow in my apartment in containers? Um, a south facing window is really great. I would recommend anything that is not fruiting. So I, I wouldn't even try tomatoes or eggplant or peppers. It's just not really going to work. But anything like greens, lettuce, microgreens, herbs like your uh, cilantro, parsley, dill, any, any leafy type veg will work. Even uh, kale or chard. Like I've um, grown kale and chard completely in indirect light in the winter and they work um, you know it's not as good but um, they grow so any any leafy green will, will do great and that's that's what I would recommend unfortunately some of your higher calorie stuff you won't be able to do just because you just don't have enough light um, but yeah microgreens and all your salad stuff your herbs will be wonderful Kayla's asking, my husband and I are about to till the first time on our 30 by 50 plot. You like Jadam. How do you recommend getting rows ready after tilled one time only? Well, I, I like tilling one time, especially if the ground is really locked up and stuff. Um, you know, I'd put out a, a layer of compost out there too to till that in to try to get some of that biology and nutrients into the lower into the ground. Um, you know, maybe just a couple inches worth, and I'd save the rest. Uh, to put on top of the beds and then I take my tiller and I have a video showing how I did my what is it 2500 square foot area 
it's like a 50 by 50 area um, at my market plot and where I tilled it and then I, I used it to shape the beds. Um, and then I just came back with a rake, formed them more, and then come bring in your compost and dump, you know, a, a four inch layer on top and then direct seed into that, transplant into that. Uh, if you're gonna do Jadam, that's the great, a great time to water in some JMS, J Jadam or Microbial Solution. Um, or IMO, or compost is obviously an inoculant as well. Mm. Cool, looks like the stream fixed itself. That's awesome. I don't know what the heck was going on, but it looks really good now. Awesome. Uh, Ruby Kayong is saying, I'm thinking about starting a raised uh, vegetable garden. Should I do all compost to fill it up? I'm very new to gardening. Yeah, you actually can just use compost um, and, and just fill uh, your garden bed up with that. But I would say that make sure that the compost is really, really good quality. And um, it's always nice when a compost kind of has a mix, like super broken down organic matter. And then some that is the carbon is still not fully broken down. Um, so that it's kind of like this long-term cycle that'll continue to break down. Um, if you want to, you know, if, if that soil doesn't have very good drainage, then adding in like 20 to 30% perlite can help with, with getting some more drainage. Um, adding in some minerals is always good. And I've got a couple videos, like it's called Make the Perfect Potting Soil. And you could use that formula. Um, or in my video, the second video for Grow Food Now, I, is it the, f no, it's the first video, I think. I, I give a formula in that where it's half compost, quarter perlite, quarter peat moss or coir. And that's, that's just like a real standard uh, raised bed soil mix. But you can absolutely do it with just, with just compost too. But it's got to be really good beans, but nothing compared to if, um, I'll answer that again in case that didn't come through. Brian's asking, can green beans do well in partial light? And the answer is like, yeah, a little bit. Like you just won't get very many beans. So I, anything that has a fruit, really, you need you need full sun. You can do it in partial light. You're just going to get way less beans than you're going to want. Uh, what's the minimum spacing for curly kale? Um, you could do like 10 inches on center. That's probably the tightest that you can get away with for that. Um, and, and then stay on top of your harvesting too. Um, you know, take off any diseased or bad leaves and then, you know, keep harvesting up that, that stock. But yeah, like 10 inches on center, I think is the, probably the tightest you could do. You know, do 12 inches if you're um, not going to get full light, uh, sunlight there. Hey, Familia, what's going on? Um... So Chip Beatty is a new gardener, started in January. Congrats, so glad you're gardening. You're, you're gonna love it. And I can tell when the plants need water, but it always seems like I should have watered the day before. Any advice on knowing when to water better? Well, let's see, the video that came out today, actually, the uh, video number three, there's a link in the description to that. I go over um, a bunch of tips on watering, but one of the most simple things you can do is just dig down an inch or two in the soil, and if it's dry in that top inch or two, um, then you should water again. Um, but I think it's also great to just watch the plants respond. Um, watch, I don't know what happened there though. Um, you know, if you see the plants drooping and, and you know getting beaten down by the sun, especially in higher hotter temps in summer, you're going to see that happen to your plants like at three, four o'clock in the, the big heat of the day. They will get droopy. But if you dig down in that soil and it's wet, it's okay. They, that's just sort of their response. And then you'll see them perk back up once the sun dips down later in the evening. And they'll come back to their full strength. Um, but uh, if you miss a day of watering, you know the plant will be okay. And, you know, knowing when to water also comes with experience. So just, you know, keep going out there and looking at your plants, observing them every single day, and you're, you're gonna get better at it as time goes on. Um, let's see here. 
Any good seed from Asia? Um, gosh, I, I really don't know. That's a good question. I uh, When I go to like uh, Zion Market here in San Diego, which is a Korean market, they always sell seeds there. Um, so like that's, you know, you can get things that I can't really find anywhere else. But I wonder, there's probably somebody in the U. I don't know if you're in the U.S. or not, but if you're in North America, there's somebody out there probably specializing in, in Asian seeds. Maybe do a search for that. But I should look into that. I, I, I would like to grow some more, mess around with some more Asian vegetables. Because where I'm moving in Tennessee is Zone 7. B, I think, or 7A, and that is like the same zone as South Korea. So growing some different Korean stuff may uh, be really cool for me. Um, oh, see, Garden Girl's asking about the, the green worms that get on your plants. Yeah, those are um, super common, like everybody has them. It's the uh, cabbage butterfly, or people call it a cabbage moth. They, one of the best ways to deal with those in a, in a home garden setting is just to look for them, actually look underneath the leaves and get them out of there and just squash them. Um, it, um, you know, you're not going to ever be able to get rid of them totally. And I've really noticed that birds do, they love eating those things. Like the... the kind of multicolored worms they hate they will not eat those like my chickens would never eat them I'm pretty sure they have some sort of poison in them oh hey Mira how's it going um, so that's what I'd recommend I guess you know uh, if you're looking for a pesticide BT or spinosad works very well on those guys those are two pesticides that are uh, basically this lab it's a lab created bacteria well they found it in nature but they culture it in labs now and it's one of the safer pesticides. I don't like using it. I don't use it because that, um, you know, it is a biocide and it does interact with human gut biology. So I don't feel good using it. But, you know, if you've got an outbreak. Um, Fat Boy is asking, how big should my ch uh, chicken coop be? I've got 10 chickens and one duck. Man. I'm forgetting on, uh, I used to have it memorized, like how many square feet per bird. It also defend, depends on the ventilation that you have in there too. Um, gosh, it was like two or four square feet per bird is like what a lot of people will recommend. Um, but honestly, 10 chickens, like you could do it in like a, I don't know, a three by two space. Uh, well, they could probably all fit in there. Do three by three if you want to give them some more room. But there's lots of good recommendations. If you just search online, like how many chickens should I put in my coop? Something I think it's like four square feet of bird, maybe. Oh, nice, Robin. Thank you for that recommendation. Uh, the Asian seed company is called New Dimension. Hmm. <clears throat> Oh, this is a good one. Uh, Zvitan says, I live in the Coachella Valley, so it gets as hot as 110, which is crazy. Um, so how do I protect my garden in summer? What plants are better for that time of year? Well, you're definitely going to want to select seeds and varieties that do better in high heat situations. Um, seed breeders will grow different seeds um, and breed them for heat tolerance. So there's like Muir lettuce uh, is a famous one for being more heat tolerant. Or there's different tomatoes that are also bred to withstand higher heats. And you're also definitely going to want some sort of shade cloth. Um, out, if it's going to be that hot, you might even need like a 40% shade for your tomatoes. Um, down in San Diego, where it gets like not between 90 and 100, I did 50% shade for my greens. Um, for tomatoes down here, like 30% makes sense, but maybe you should go even a little higher because of that heat. Um, you know, you will lose a little bit of fruit production because of the cutting of the light, but it is a balancing act because if it's going up to 110, your plant is just going to like completely halt, not put out flowers and everything. So, um, that's what I'd, I'd recommend. And, you know, it's always good to go ask other grow like professional growers in your area go to the farmers market and ask those guys like hey how are you growing this right now and they'll give you good advice on what they're doing and they you know 
I can give you like, you know, some okay advice, but the people who grow in your local area are going to have the best advice for you. Mark Escobar is asking, do you test your soil and where should I go in San Diego? Yes, um, I, every year I tested it. Um, and you, uh, I guess I would recommend Logan Labs. They're like the cheapest one to do it with. Um, them or Wallace Labs is also excellent. They're more expensive, but it's a more comprehensive test. So those are the two places I've done it with. A lot of farmers use Logan Labs. <clears throat> Four square foot of bird. Thanks, Singleman. That's what I was thinking it was. I just couldn't remember. Uh, Sandy's asking, um, her. she planted an artichoke, but it's kind of taking over her garden. Will it survive if I move it? I've never tried to move an artichoke, but I don't think it would like that very much since it's a perennial. Um, but if you need that space in your garden, then I would just attempt it because... Uh, Artichokes are wonderful, but they only give you, you know, a small amount of food every year. So go for it, you know, try to preserve as, dig as deep and wide of a hole as possible to try to preserve as much of the roots as you can uh, when you move it and try to match that size hole when you move it as well. And I hope it, you know, is able to, to take the stress. I don't know for sure on that. The best time to plant fruit trees uh, is bare root season. Um, so... Bare root season is uh, they'll ship you the trees when they're dormant, so that's in the winter. So winter and early spring is the best time to plant trees. And you know if you look at like groworganic.com or you know there's different places out there that that'll ship you bare root trees. You can check out when they ship those, and um, it'll also be different for your your area too because if you like have ground that's frozen, you can't. You got to wait. So. So Brian says, I'm new and have partial sunlight um, on the patio. I have some herbs and plan to add leafy greens, but have room for a larger vine or plant. Um, definitely add leafy greens. They'll grow great in partial or, or even no sun. They will work. Uh, for, so for a larger vine, if you plan to grow in winter, then you want to do a vine that's going to lose its leaves in winter. So like a grape or a kiwi. I, I'd recommend one of those. I love passion fruit. That's a great one, but that always has its leaves, so it's going to provide probably way too much shade. So look for a vine, and you can even search that, you know, a fruiting vine that loses its leaves in winter, and um, it'll give you even more options than what I'm telling you. Six B. Uh, Christopher is saying, what fruits do, would you recommend for my garden in zone 6B? And do you think I could grow citrus? I don't think that you could grow citrus there. I don't think that's possible. Um, it's just too cold. Um, but because you're in such a cold place, you can grow stone fruit and apples and nut trees and things that need more um, uh, frost or uh, cold hours. So like here in San Diego, or chill hours, sorry, um, here in San Diego, you know, certain places, we only get like 200 to like 400 chill hours. So we're, we're way more limited on what we can grow here. Like cherries, for instance, they just recently developed a cherry called the Royal Lee. That's like a two or 300. Reconnection. And I'm back. Man, I don't know, there's something weird going on with the router. I'll have to work on that later. Let's see here. I don't know if I'm back or not. What's this saying? Okay, cool. It did. It skipped all the stuff where I was fixing it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. There's something weird going on. I'll have to fix the router, guys. If it, if it crashes again, I'm just going to stop the stream. And uh, tomorrow I'm going to be at a new location, actually. So I shouldn't have this problem. And it's a brand new router and modem, so... I guess that's something I didn't set up right, but it's weird because it, the internet works and then it crashes. So I don't know what the heck is going on, but now it's super stable. <laughs> Gotta love technology. 
See, this is where I like plants and nature. It's uh, dependable. I always know how it's going to work for the most part. <laughs> and now the connection is super stable. Look at that. It's not bouncing. All right. All right. Let's try to go back here. I'm sorry about that, you guys. Um, now I can't see my chat window. Oh, there it is. <laughs> sorry, guys. <laughs> All right, cool. Thanks for coming back. I appreciate it. It's, uh, I'm sorry for the annoying stream here. I'll try to scroll back up. Um, we got Mr. Brian White here. Hi, Steve. I grow a small variety of vegetables, potatoes, and some kind of bean and legume in containers. Any suggestion? Uh, what What do you want to know about? Um. Yeah, Thomas Ross, definitely. Yeah, just look into getting shade cough. It's it's really cheap. It's it's really inexpensive. You can get a roll of it for you know. It depends what how much size you want to get, but um, it's it's very inexpensive. And it's crashing again. Ugh, why? Well, if I lose you guys again, I apologize, and I'll be back tomorrow with a, a way better connection. This is something about this router. Um. <clears throat> they recommend trying to transplant some of the overseeding oh Jonathan saying yeah if you overseed can you transplant some of it yeah definitely um, I've even had it where like a plant from the previous season dropped a bunch of seed and then you know the next spring it like a bunch of them sprout up and then like tomatoes and stuff you can yeah totally take them out of the ground and put them in pots or go plant them somewhere else I, I think that's a really great Little technique, absolutely. Um, yeah, Jira, Jared BJX. I feel like it's tough to keep tomatoes watered enough in buckets, and that's yeah, that's something with grow bags and growing in pots. They really dry out quick because they're above the ground, right, and the sun's hitting the sides of them. Um, or in the case of the grow bag, there's even more air that's able to, to hit it. So, you know, it, uh, you definitely have to keep them a lot more watered or you got to stay on top of it. If you miss a watering day, you know, it's not like the roots can go super deep and wide to go find the water. So it's definitely something to keep in mind. Oh, nice. Thank you, Mira. You got some great recommendations for the seeds. Um... Sakura cherries. Yeah, those are really nice cherry tomatoes. And buckets. Yeah, a lot of people do like hydro style tomatoes and in, in buckets. I don't know if that's what you're doing, Stephanie, but that's cool. Um, hey, James, how's it going? Super basic starting some broccoli. Awesome. Gotta love growing broccoli. That's a fun one. And even after you've chopped the main head, uh, remember there's going to be side shoots that come out, so you'll get a lot of small little mini broccolis too. Or broccolini is a really cool plant to grow too. Uh, just much of the smaller shoots versus a, a really large head. Cameron's asking, when you got your piles up to 150 to 160, how long would they sustain those temps? Mine get up to a 130, 140 for a week or two and then lose it. That's good, Cameron. That that's, means you're doing a really good job. Um, those higher temps, you're only going to be able to keep them for about a week, um, especially if you're turning them as you're, as you're supposed to be. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a great sign. And, uh, you know, after a couple of weeks, it'll go down to 120, and then the temperatures drop again. You turn it, infuse it with more oxygen, it goes a little bit back up. But, like, once you've burned off a lot of the higher nitrogen and the really fresh stuff off, um, that's the reason it can't get back up to those temps again because the bacteria and you know, the biology has um, expended those those food resources and like they, they've expanded their like population to the maximum and now um, things are like stabilizing basically like, that's how I kind of understand it um, my thoughts on, on hydroponics is it's okay like I'm not that I'm not a fan of hydroponics you know there's there is some context you know when you when you maybe want to do that but 
you know, I think that the healthiest possible food that we could be eating is going to be grown in soil because if you know anything about the biological relationship between plants and soil biology, uh, if you just go study some soil food web, Elaine Ingham or Jeff Lowenfels, any of those people, and, and you'll start to understand why the soil is so important and that relationship between the, the, the plants and those uh, biological, those creatures in there. Um, Hydro omits that. It's like a very reductionist way of thinking like, oh, I know exactly what nutrients this plant needs. So here, we're just going to inject that in there. Yeah, plants grow, but in my opinion, they don't have as much flavor. They do not look as good as colorful. Color and taste is a gigantic indicator of nutrition. Um, so you know, having said that, I've, I see lots of people doing it successfully, but I'm, I'm personally not a fan. It's not something I would ever do personally. Um, But you can use hydro to grow a lot of food in the city in a very small space. It just uses a lot of electricity. You save on water, but it's like a giant power hog too. You know, why use that when we have like the sun, which is the perfect spectrum of light. And, um, you know, my channel is, <laughs> my company is called Nature's Always Right for a reason. You know, God designed the earth and, and human beings and the soil a certain way. And whenever we deviate from that, there's some sort of consequence. Um, so the most optimal way to design farms and your diet and, um, you know, thinking about your own gut biology and it's all, it's, all these things are related and, and all connected together. So we got to keep the whole system in mind and not have such like this Western reductionist idea that we understand everything about nature and we know exactly what nutrients human beings and plants needs. Um, you know, for example, like vitamin K was discovered in the early nineties. You know, we're, we're still discovering nutrients and compounds like sulfurethane. I think I forgot. I think that's how you say it in broccoli, the anti-cancer chemical that was recently discovered in the last 20 years. We didn't even know existed. So there's all these things that we assume we know, but we really don't know. You know, we used to till the earth and we thought that was the best way to farm. Now we know that destroys soil life. So like, um, when we make these giant assumptions that we know about creation, well, there's, you know, there's big consequences um, when you try to do something thinking you have the full understanding. So that's kind of my thoughts about hydro and, and just like, you know, maybe modern medicine too, you know, all that. That's allopathic medicine. Yeah, Cameron, you're doing a really good job on your on your compost. It's not easy to hit those temperatures and maintain them. It takes a lot of uh, practice. Um, Robert's asking, um, Stephen, are you going to make any modifications to your drip tape manifold at your new place? Yeah, you know, I think that um, the only real modification I might make is I'll probably, like my T connections or any of my adapter pieces, I'll probably just buy all the twist off ones, even though they might be a little bit more expensive. Um, because it's just so much easier to take apart, like if I need to replace something or if I want to move it somewhere else or, you know, I was able to save like all my stuff, but I had to cut because I used mostly compression tees for like going in between the manifolds, between the beds, like I cut it and now I have to buy an adapter piece to reconnect it later on. Um, so now I think I, now I recommend just getting the twist on and off uh, pieces. I think that that makes more sense, unless maybe you're just building, I'm, you know, I'm building this, I'm not moving it, um, then maybe just do the compressions. And the compressions are, you know, they're hard to get on there, it's, it gets annoying. Yeah, oh, Kurt, yeah, I, I answered that question last night, I don't know, maybe the connection got messed up or something, but go watch my video called No Till Versus Tail Versus No Dig. And I'll give, that's a very in-depth analysis. Um, there is a context for broad forking. I think that it, there's a context where it really does make sense to use it. And I think it is more, I think it is beneficial for the soil. Um, especially if you don't have the money to just bring in a ton of compost and grow straight up in the compost on top of that bad soil. And let it, letting biology over years um, decompact and convert the soil texture to uh, higher organic matter and, and you know more workable soil but if you go watch that video it, it's a pretty comprehensive explanation
Yeah, Beth, I have considered growing mushrooms. That's something I really want to try doing in Tennessee because um, out there, because of the higher humidity and all that, you can do the shiitake logs and all that fun stuff. So I, I, my, my wife is really interested in doing uh, mushrooms. We did try growing um, lion's mane mushroom. Like, you know, you buy the bag with it, like it's already in, like the wood chips or whatever, already inoculated. We tried doing that and I don't know, we didn't do a very good job keeping it moist enough. Like our, our apartment was just not the right place to, to do that. There's like no insulation and it's kind of like a breeze in that thing. So <laughs> we lived in a very small, uh, not so nice uh, apartment. Um, Bioflock for aquaponics. I don't, I'm not familiar with that term bioflock. I've thought about using like biochar or like inoculating the biochar with like a, a pond or lake water and then using that to inoculate the uh, aquaponic system. Um, I, but I don't know what bioflock is. I'll have to look that up. Yeah, Brian, um, if you're in a low light condition, like an apartment or under a patio or something like that, then just, I really think that the things you should be focusing on are greens, salad stuff, herbs, but anything that grows a fruit, and what I mean by that is like squash, tomatoes, eggplant, beans, um, peppers, any of that is not really gonna work for you. Uh, maybe you could get away with growing some spicy peppers, but any larger size fruit, it's just really not going to be worth it. I think it'd be better to just uh, buy locally and then grow all of your own salad stuff or microgreens will work well. But that's about it in my experience. White powder on your zucchinis is called powdery mildew. Or some people abbreviate it PM. Um, and that's just a, a fungal disease. And all squash is going to get that at some point in its life. One great way is just to remove those leaves that have it. And typically, if your squash is healthy enough and um, your soil's fertile enough, it's going to be putting out healthy new leaves all the time. Um, and you can just rip away those bad ones and get rid of them, and it'll be able to like outpace the powdery mildew. But no more towards like the end of summer when it's really hot and the plant has used up a lot of its like life energy it will be harder for it to fight off the powdery mildew and the plant will get weaker and weaker and weaker until it's kind of done. And that's kind of like a normal cycle, honestly, for squash. So you can use things to mitigate it and it just, you know, look up some of those online. Like, you know, there's diluted milk or you can, so there's some different things. Um, but I think a better way is to do a couple successions of squash plants. So, you know, you're planting one in early spring or late spring, depending on your location. And then maybe one at the beginning summer, one at the end of summer, so that you can stagger out your harvest and like have really healthy plants that entire time. And plant those other squash in some other bed away from uh, those other squash, especially like if you can plant them in a position that's not going to get wind, then those fungal spores won't be able to blow onto that new plant. So there's like some ideas for you. Cameron's right by a cattle farm. Dr. Bing, yeah, vitamin K was not discovered until the 90s. Go look it up, man. There's, I think we only know, like, we don't even exactly know what is in our food. There's like 50, 60% of it we've discovered, but we know there's a ton of other chemical compounds in it, but we just don't, haven't discovered them yet. That's from the research that I've been reading. Thanks, Jared, man. Glad you're enjoying the channel. I tried and just, uh, help as many people grow food as possible and naturally too. I, I don't use any type of pesticide or herbicide or any of that stuff. Um, at least here in San Diego, once I go to Tennessee, it may be a different ball game because they got crazy insects. Uh, Japanese beetles being one of the really bad ones. I've seen them out there on a plant, like a thousand on one plant and, um, and it's back. Um, sorry, let me read that. Oh yeah, the compost. Yeah, definitely go watch my two videos on that. I, I really go into detail about how you can keep the pile temp up and all that. I would say don't flip it every other day. That's that's too much. You're, you're, you're flipping it too often, I would say. Um, I like to 
let the temperature, like it goes to the max temp and then let it sit there and then let it um, decrease like maybe 10 degrees once it starts cooling down a bit and then flip it. Um, so typically like in my backyard piles, I could have the max temp sit there for like four days, some five days, something like that. And then it would start to drop. And then once it started to drop, if you know five degrees or something, then boom, I'll flip it. Um, and then that would help to keep it at max temp all the time. You also may not be having enough uh, like higher nitrogen stuff in there. So if you have access to animal manure, that's a great source or, or different plant sources that are higher nitrogen like legumes or clover. Um, things like that will help you keep higher temps. Doing bokashi composting is another great way to get really high temps. That's, that's probably what helped me the most in a small like 3x3 three three or 4x4x4 four by four by four pile because it's smaller. Um, making a bigger pile can help you reach higher temperatures. Look into bokashi composting. I've got some videos on that. Um, yeah, thank you. If you could like the video, you guys, that'd super be super helpful to me in this video, getting more people to see it. Thanks, everybody, for all the great questions and interest in gardening. When am I going to Tennessee? We'll see. We're, we're trying to get pre-approved for our mortgage loan right now and then, uh, you know, trying to buy something as soon as we find that right property. Want to get that out there as soon as possible and build my homestead, though, because um, <laughs> I really wish I had uh, some land right now with everything going on. Our Goots is asking about urine. Well, yeah, urine definitely uh, is something that works. It's um, higher nitrogen. What's my thoughts on a plant-based diet? I mean, go for it. Uh, I've, done, I've been into nutrition and all this stuff for like over 10 years. Um, I think plant-based works for some people, but if you guys know who Weston A. Price is, uh, I'm really big into that uh, sort of idea. So I'm, you know, animal products I think are going to give you the best uh, health for your body, for sure. I guess, and yes, I have read, uh, what's that book, The China Study. I've read that book. I, I could talk about it at length. But hey, do what works for you. If you feel really healthy on that diet, go for it. <clears throat> oh yeah, Scott's just showing the, about vitamin K in the 30s. Maybe I'm thinking about something else. I mean, it's something, I was thinking sulfurethane. I think that was the one that was discovered in the 90s. But yeah, vitamin K a long time ago. But there's uh, lots of things about food that we do not yet understand. Nice, Stephanie. I'm glad to hear they're not bothering your vegetables. Those Japanese beetles are like unbelievable. We have these fig eater beetles here in San Diego and like they'll go for anything sweet, like any of your berries or, um, you know, obviously figs and stuff. And I was like so surprised by those Japanese beetles when I saw them. Yeah, Matt, the quicker I can get to land, the better for sure. Hey, Brian, how's it going, buddy? <laughs> Have fun cooking, man. <laughs> the soil out in Tennessee is pretty gnarly. It's, it's rocky and very clay. So it's, you know, but, you know, I'd almost prefer clay soil just because of it has so many uh, nutrients and minerals and all that in it. You just got to get it broken down with biology. Um, James, I'm going to be getting rural land. Um, I want at least five acres. We'll see how many I can get. Um, but, uh, yeah, I definitely want at least five trying to be out outside of the city and the suburban areas, nowhere near that. So I want to be able to do whatever I want on my own land. I want to be able to shoot guns on my own land. Um, not have anybody tell me what to do whatsoever. Yeah, I prefer the uh, country people who uh, are self-sufficient and, you know, and they're not trying to control their neighbor and, you know, they're not calling and saying, hey, they're not social distancing, get them. 
Yeah, I don't want to be around any people like that, let's just say. No problem, Brian. Happy to help you, man. Good luck out there. Andrew's asking about uh, snails and slugs. I don't know if that went through. Sna uh, Andrew's asking about snails and slugs. Um, I never had a ton of problem with them personally, but uh, what I've seen work for a lot of people is uh, beer traps. So what you do is you just um, dig a little hole that the snail, uh, yeah, dig a hole big enough for like a red, you know, solo cup, put it in there, put some cheap beer in there, and that attracts the snails and the slugs. They'll go in there and just die. Um, so that's a way, a, a good trap that I've seen for them. Um, Scott, I chose Tennessee because I think it's one of the freest states left. And the people there think very free, you know, many of them do. Obviously the people in the cities, you know, people in the cities have always lose their way and they, uh, they go anti-freedom, more socialist, you know, thinking. But um, I want to be, we're trying to buy outside of Chattanooga to be, you know, because my, my wife is Korean, so we want to be able to go to Atlanta to get Korean food and, and groceries and all that stuff. And um, But Atlanta is way too big of a city, way too many leftists. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I really like Georgia, especially North Georgia, but I'm worried about that state going blue or, um, you know, there's a 6% income tax. Um, yeah, Damien. And so like Hamilton, Hamilton County is where the city of Chattanooga is. And we want to live outside of Hamilton County because any laws, regulations, all that nonsense is going to, you know, it's going to happen in Hamilton County. If you're outside in Bradley or one of those other ones, that's, you know, it's all country. So there's way less likelihood of, um, government intruding on your rights there. So, <clears throat> Pine needles are, yeah, they're a good mulch for sure. Yeah, they're not bad at all. Um, I like pine needles. They are um, a little bit more side, but I wouldn't worry too much about that since most soil uh, tends to be more alkaline. Man, this stupid thing keeps dropping. <sighs> Yeah, I don't really talk about politics in my videos too much. Um, I'm not a right winger. Uh, I would not call myself that. I'm not a Trump lover. I'm not. I'm a. I'm not a, a government lover. I, I don't believe in um, trying to control people with a gang of thieves. And obviously, man, if I'm farming and I'm into uh, nature and trying to do things as naturally as possible, don't you think that I would be into clean water and air? Why would you automatically assume that I'm against that? You got to use your brain, man. Don't pe don't put people in a box. Nice, honey. You got some Hugel beds. Yeah, I want to mess around with Hugel culture. It's it's a it's an interesting uh, concept. But here in San Diego, we don't get enough rain to really make it effective. I think. But out in Tennessee, I'm going to get enough rain where having a hugel bed would be, would, so I uh, hope to be able to try a hugel bed. But this connection keeps screwing up here, so I'm going to probably head out pretty soon. I'll see if there's one more question, if there's, if, if the connection holds out here and then uh, I'll get going soon here. But uh, Dancing Hyena, you're banned for life, dude. Go get a life. Cool, yeah, hit me with one or two more questions. And yeah, it's six o'clock, so I will head out after this. Oh, if you guys want to email me or something, it's um, steven at naturesalwaysright.com. Thanks, Cameron. Always nice hanging out with you too, man. Thanks for all the great uh, interaction stuff. It's, it's fun. I love talking to you guys and talking about my favorite subject. So. 
So yeah, let's see, tomorrow, what's the video? Um, oh yeah, it's about seeding. Um, so we're going to be talking about seeding in trays and um, uh, planting seeds so you guys can start your own transplants. And I've got a lot of other really great uh, videos about starting seeds and soil blocks and plug trays, the never sink, wind strip trays. Um, so I've tried all the different ways to start seeds and I just love uh, soil blocks. It's one of my favorites. Um, hey, Sony. Yeah, um, I'll be back in San Diego here and there. Oh, that's cool. You met Natalie. That's awesome. She's super nice. I, I really like her a lot. Um, maybe when I come back, we can do another video together or something. Oh, yeah, I will continue to do the videos. I'll continue doing live streams, all that great stuff. Um, I've got a lot of huge things planned once I get to Tennessee, so I'm excited to, to start my next project and all that great stuff. Um, yeah, Sam, Sam B. 1600. If you email me, Stephen at naturesalwaysright.com. Yeah, if you'd want to do a Skype consultation or anything like that, uh, we can talk about it there. And if you guys want to support the, the stream, I have a Patreon and I have a PayPal that you can donate through if you're interested. If not, that's totally cool. I just want to help people grow more food and just take care of their families better, become more self-sufficient, become less reliant upon the system and upon government and so that we can all live a more free, happy, healthy life. And Stephanie's asking, have I tried the Haas trays? You know, I have not tried theirs yet. And I know that they're kind of similar to the wind strips where they're trying to mimic the soil blocking, air, air root, um, air pruning. I have not tried them yet. In the OC area, I can't think of any off the top of my head right now. Cameron, I, I for sure would, will be doing some workshops in Tennessee and hopefully some other areas too. Um, Right now, I'm just really focused on uh, creating a lot of content right now. And if you guys don't know, I'm, I work with Curtis Stone now, the urban farmer, on his private website, fromthefield.farm, making content there as well. And I'm also focused on getting our, our homestead and new farm set up. So, but I absolutely, I want to do workshops in the, in the future. Um, Um, Curtis, um, well, we connected for that because he came out to my market garden when he was out in San Diego doing some other content and that's how I was able to meet him. And yeah, he did, he did a video about me and then, you know, we, be, you know, became friends and then we'd, we'd talk here and there and then, um, yeah. And then he eventually reached out for me cause he was looking for more people to add to from the field to make content. So, oh, thanks, Sonny. I appreciate it. Um, all right, you guys. Well, sorry for the bad connection today.